Okay, next tutorial. For today's character makeup, I wanted to do something that I've not done before in this channel. I wanted to do something that was the opposite of an infection and more kind of like a radiation leak or a biohazard accident. Maybe someone that worked at a nuclear power plant and something obviously went wrong. I just had an idea and this is what I did. <laughs> Either way, I wanted to go down the more radioactive zombie route, so hopefully that translates. <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun to do something different. So, if you'd like to learn how to do this makeup for yourself, stay tuned. Okie dokie, so to get this makeup started, let's talk about the prosthetics I'm gonna be using. Yes, this looks a little bit weird, but the majority of this is flashing and we're not gonna be using it. We're just gonna be using the actual pieces inside. So these rather gorgeous looking boils are made of foam latex, and they have super gorgeous edges. Look at those. <laughs> If you wanted to get those prosthetics from yourself, I got mine from MostlyDev.com. I'll pop that link on the screen there. It'll also be in the description bar below with a link that'll take you to a page that'll get you a discount off your order if you wanted to get something from them. So I'm just going to break one of them out now to show you how I do it. I don't like using scissors because if I do it this way, at least I get a more natural, more staggered tear in the edge. So when I stick it down and blend it, it won't have just like a blunt line. It'll be really staggered and feathered out. There we go. So as these pieces are relatively small, they're gonna be quite fun and easy to stick down, plus they'll move with the face a lot better than say a full foam latex face prosthetic. So to stick my foam latex down, I like to use Pro Stick, which is a really nice prosthetic adhesive. So I take a cotton bud, dip it in the Pro Stick, apply it to the back of the prosthetic, and then I apply it to the corresponding area on my face, let it go tacky for about 10 seconds or so, and then stick everything down. But before I do that, I'm just gonna start lining bits up just to see where exactly I want to stick these down. I do like the idea of one of the pieces going over an eyebrow. So usually I would need to block an eyebrow out to stick a foam latex prosthetic over that, just a personal preference of mine. But as I don't think the prosthetic is gonna cover the entire eyebrow, I will block it out just so any edges are hidden. So I'll pop a link on the screen up there to a video that I did in the past to teach you how to block out your eyebrows if that's the kind of method you wanna follow yourself. Bearing in mind though, that it's only gonna to apply to one eyebrow. So I'm just gonna go block out my eyebrow and we'll go from there. Okie dokie, so now that my eyebrows nicely stuck down, we can start sticking down the prosthetics. Then, when you're happy with the placement of your prosthetics and everything's nicely stuck down, we can take a new cotton bud and dip it in some more Pro Stick and go around all of the edges of these pieces. Just make sure to brush away from the edges so you don't lift anything up. That way, when it dries, it will seal it off and make sure it blends off into the skin nicely. Next, we can start working on the foundation and coloring a tiny bit of the prosthetics just as a base color. So because I want this makeup to have kind of a dewy look and I want it to be quite a few layers and I want it to be bruising in certain areas, I'm gonna be using a Skin Illustrator alcohol palette, which to be honest is also my go-to product whenever I color in foam latex. So the Skin Illustrator palette that I'm gonna be using today is American Horror, purely because it has some really pale tones in there and some really good greens because I want a really sickly color to this and also some nice purple for veins. So to use these colors, you need 99% alcohol to activate them and the way I like to use them is not sticking with one color too many times and using quite a firm fluffy brush. I like to stagger the color all around the face just to break it up and then just change colors every now and again just to make it look a little bit more natural plus it makes it really fun to try and add bruising around certain areas like the nose and the eyes and it just helps to blend together more naturally. So I'm going to start with some of the paler colors first and just apply that all around my face. I'm now switching to the two green shades, so the darker and the lighter, that I'm gonna stagger around the edge of my face and blend it towards the center. Obviously, it's not gonna be a huge amount of color, we just want there to be that hint of green there. Kind of a hint of decay. I'm then gonna take the deep red color from the palette and I'm gonna start applying that over all of these boils around my nose area and the corners of my mouth. Okay, so don't worry about how harsh it will look at this point. I really want the dark colors there so I can lighten them up afterwards and start increasing different elements between the layers. For example, I'm gonna take a really, really fine but firm brush, dip it directly into the red that we've used around these boils, and I can start drawing on some veins going away, breaking off every now and again from these boils. 
They need to be quite harsh looking at this stage because then when we go to lighten everything up, they still appear underneath the second layer. That way it really looks like it's under the skin. So I'm just gonna do some random broken veins going across all of the face and then we can start working on lightening everything up. Okie dokie, so then I'm gonna go over the entire area again with some of the lighter skin tones mixed with some of the green. I'm gonna make sure that I apply it really sporadically so that some areas are more prominent than others. I'm then gonna take the lightest shade from this palette, which has got a tiny hint of yellow in it, and I'm gonna apply that over all of these boils. And then going back to my really firm small brush and I'm using the same red that I used for the veins and I'm just gonna go around the edge of each of the boils. So then I'm gonna work on making my eyes a little bit um, less healthy looking. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna take a bruise wheel, this one's by Crowland, and to be honest, if I could recommend anything to have in a starter FX kit, it would be a bruise wheel. They're essentially just creams, but bruise wheels come in these gorgeous specific colors. So I'm gonna take the dark, dark blue from this palette, and I'm gonna apply that underneath both of my eyes. Not blending it out too far, I want it to be quite dark, because we're not really going for bruising necessarily, just a general sore look. And after we've done with the dark blue, I'm gonna take the red cream from this wheel, go over the blue and apply it over my eyelids as well and blend it away. I'm also just going to apply some of that dark blue from the bruise wheel onto my lips as well, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pucker them so that I can apply it over the top really sporadically so that when I relax my lips you've got these natural lines through it, kind of like they're chapped. Then the next step is arguably the ickiest part, and I'm gonna really enjoy this, and that is to apply some lip gloss, or you could use Vaseline, or any kind of material that doesn't necessarily dry, that stays shiny. It doesn't particularly matter which brand you use either, I'm just gonna be using a MAC lip gloss. And with that, I'm just gonna apply it to the end of my little finger, and I'm just gonna dab it lightly underneath my eyes, and I'm also gonna apply it around the corners of the lips and around my nose. I'm also gonna really lightly dab it over some of the boils as well. It's just gonna make everything look a lot more sickly. <laughs> So there we go, nice and icky looking. Lovely. <laughs> so all that's left for me to do now is to pop in some contact lenses, pop on a costume, and we'll see what it looks like. And there we go. That's my look, officially complete. So I'll finish the look off by popping on a kind of biohazard hazmat suit costume that I got from Amazon. I also popped on some black latex gloves just to complete the look. I was initially gonna have the hood up as well, but for two reasons I decided not. One, it kind of made it look like I was wearing a onesie, and two, I don't think this character will particularly mind not wearing the hood at this point. <laughs> I also popped on this little gas mask that I got from Comic-Con a long time ago, just to make the look a little bit more three-dimensional. I also made my hair look a little bit, um, let's go with fun. <laughs> I thought my hair's already blue, so I might as well make it bigger. I mean, go big or go home, that kind of thing, innit? <laughs> so I thought I'd messy it up a bit and spray a bit of black hairspray in there just to make it look a little bit more dirty and to hold it all in place. And finally, I popped in some contact lenses, which I'm really, really happy with this choice. I popped in a Sclera contact lens that I got from Sclera XL. That link will be in the description bar below. And I popped in this gorgeous, really dilated kind of lens that I got from CameraEyes.com. That link will also be in the description bar below. I really like the dilated effect it gives. And yeah, so that's my makeup tutorial. I really hope you all enjoyed it. I know it's relatively basic, but hopefully all the elements came together. I had a lot of fun doing it, and it's so much fun doing gross makeups. <laughs> so yeah, thanks everyone so much for watching. If you did like this tutorial, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. And yeah, so until next time. Bye, Fluffies!